Now, there, there are various uh, uh, times at which this can occur. At induction, when you have an IV in place, you're giving IV propofol rapidly or fentanyl rapidly. Um, they will typically they will cough and they will become apneic. Okay, this is something which I've seen time and again. So uh, when you're giving propofol or fentanyl in a small child, just give it slowly, gradually, preferably in a running grip. Okay, and do it very don't do it very fast, particularly if they have a, a propensity for AV hyperactivity. So they will cough and they will stop breathing, and you're trying to ventilate, you cannot ventilate. So that's one common scenario we we see laryngospasm. And uh, let's say you have a child with uh, um, herniotomy where you've inserted an LMA. Okay, and you've given a caudal, but your caudal hasn't worked, or you haven't given adequate time for the caudal work. So what happens is when the surgeon makes a surgical incision, the child will feel the pain, and the first thing they do is they will close the vocal cords. They will go for a laryngospasm. Hmm? Within uh, 30 seconds, they start desaturating. So uh, any acutely painful stimuli intraoperatively, particularly in the presence of an LMA or a mask, they will go in for a laryngospasm. And lastly, the commonest time when they occur is at emergence, when, in, when you remove the LMA or when, the, when you extubate a child. So what are the problems in, in the post anesthetic, -anesthetic care unit or, or the PACU? Apnea, AV obstruction, pain, emergent delirium, nausea vomiting, temperature, and finally, you could have some hemodynamic disturbances. So, we'll just talk briefly about apnea. So, we have something called apnea of prematurity. So, uh, what do you, how do you define apnea? Apnea is when you stop breathing for 15 seconds or longer. That's one definition. Or, if it's a shorter period, then any cessation of breathing for less than 15 seconds, but the child also has things like bradycardia or uh, cyanosis, then that also counts as apnea. This is opposed to periodic breathing where a child has short spells of periodic breathing. They will stop breathing for 5 seconds. Again, they will start breathing. So, that's again observed commonly in children, but this doesn't usually lead to any major issues. Okay, It's commoner in smaller children at anesthesia, um, whereas this one can occur uh, typically in premature children or premature born children up to a certain weeks post conceptual age. So, um, so apnea of prematurity ten generally tends to occur in children born less than 37 weeks of age till the post conceptual age of around 50 weeks. Okay, So, if a child is born at uh, 35 weeks of age, for the next 15 weeks, they are, they are at a high risk of apnea with any sedation or anesthesia. So, uh, we recommend that these children are always uh, observed for a longer time in the recovery and maybe even have a overnight admission in the hospital.